we'll be getting started in just, I was gonna say just a minute, but the, the time just turned. So uh, Cameron uh, is director of the National Academy of Sciences Board on Infrastructure and the Constructed Environment. And it's through Cameron's support that the Asset Leadership Network really had a foothold uh, by being able to present at the National Academy of Sciences for uh, many years while we were meeting in, per in person. The seriousness of our message was heard throughout the federal government and uh, throughout the country. So much appreciation for that. And Jack Dempsey was the person who introduced us to the uh, National Academy of Sciences. And Jack is uh, on the board of infrastructure and the constructed environment, in addition to being a board of directors member, an ALN senior fellow and the director of Definitive Logic. And I can happily say that he met his uh, colleagues at Definitive Logic in the National Academy of Sciences. So uh, Jack, that uh, connection you made for the ALN worked out pretty good for you. Uh, Cameron, uh, we can make you presenter because I know you have some slides um, that you would like to share. Should be able to share at this point if you try. There you go. And we also thank Cameron because he is uh, taking time away from one of his other uh, meetings to make this initial uh, presentation before uh, Jack Dempsey uh, talks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you all. Thank, uh, good afternoon. I'm Cameron Osvig, as Mike already described. I'm the director of the Board on Infrastructure and Constructed Environment. I'm joined by one of my board members, Jack Dempsey, who served on a, a, several of our committees uh, and is on our board for his expertise in asset management. Um, what I do and what, what the Board on Infrastructure does is we don't manage infrastructure, we don't manage funding, rather we manage a portfolio of peer-reviewed advisory services. Uh, like Mike described earlier, we don't bring problems to the table, we try to bring solutions to the table, and one of those is, is in uh, implementation of asset management systems approaches. Um, the, I'm going to describe our portfolio of activities today, a portfolio which highlights a diversity of different kinds of activities, but also demonstrates a goal to deliver value through infrastructure. Most of our studies focus on the efficient and effective uh, management or delivery of infrastructure or support future infrastructure investment. And so uh, I'm just going to briefly talk about our portfolio and then turn it over to Jack to kind of tie a bow around it and, and piece it all together in, in, the, in the world of asset management. So uh, all right, so the Board on Infrastructure advises on questions of technology, science, and public policy in, in any aspect of the built environment. And it's the, also the relationship between the construction and the natural environments. And we've been a longstanding board in the National Academies for since 1946. Um, the vice members uh, were chaired by uh, General Tom Bostic, former chief of the Army Corps of Engineers, and, and a diverse group of, of smart people, uh, including Jack Dempsey. We are cross-collaborative. So when we say infrastructure, it's the big word infrastructure. It's across all sectors of infrastructure. Um, the National Academies has boards in each of these um, uh, infrastructure uh, areas, but we cross collaborate in the general term of infrastructure. Our principal disciplines include construction, civil engineering, facilities management, public administration, social and environmental, social science, environmental science, and economics. Some focus areas include life cycle, uh, any part of the life cycle, uh, including applications of technology, federal real property, workforce issues, resilience, sustainability. Um, a, a big area for us right now, partly because of COVID, is human factors in the built environment, so health and productivity in the built environment, climate change and other areas. Uh, so in describing our activities, I kind of pithy put together a title on refrigerators, telescopes, and soda bottles. Um, so this is the refrigerator section. We recently published a report on the review methods for setting and building equipment performance standards. The link for that report is in this slide. 
Uh, in that report, we reviewed the assumptions, models, and analytical methods that DOE uses in the quantitative portion for setting appliance standards. The appliance standards are the minimum standards the DOE sets for things such as dishwashers, residential furnaces, commercial refrigerators. In that report, we describe how a DOE can improve its analyses and align regulatory analyses with the best practices. And um, we reviewed these three representative standards in doing so. The recommendations within that report included organizing standards analyses around long-standing regulatory impact analyses uh, framework. The, we also provide specific recommendations for presenting uncertainty and variability in estimates and quantifying different impact and for gathering data to improve future analyses. And we also encouraged DOE in the report to use the role of the standards in the, to change the environment and avoid standards that would impede innovation. Um, there's a lot more detail to those recommendations. So if you're interested in the appliance standards, um, please feel free to just uh, Google or download the report from the National Academy Press. One of our other studies is a forensic engineering study on the causes of failure and collapse of the 305 meter telescope at Arecibo Observatory in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Now this committee uh, is looking at the explaining the contributing factors and probable causes to failure, but one of the key aspects of the report is also recommendations to prevent similar damage to other facilities in the future. Other facilities could be uh, large facilities in a tropical region um, in, in the same type of tropical environment, or it could include large scientific unique facilities like Arecibo was. An environmental study that we're doing is the repurposing of plastics waste and infrastructure. That committee right now is presently meeting, and as Mike said, I, I'm skipping out on that committee session to be here. Uh, but what we're looking is to do is identify opportunities for repurposing plastic waste in infrastructure. The role of my board is to look at all of the ways that we could do that in infrastructure other than transportation infrastructure, or actually other than pavement infrastructure. So we're looking at things such as pipes, um, compressed uh, structural units, um, geo geosynthetics, um, and um, applications in concrete and other structural materials. One of the key aspects of that study is to look at the upstream portion to see if there's a way that we can manufacture plastics that would make them more readily usable as a, as a in reuse and as a recycled component to infrastructure. Uh, in the asset management uh, and funding areas, uh, this one is sponsored by the Federal Facilities Council, and, and I've talked several times at ALN events about a strategy to renew federal facilities, where the goal is to ensure that federal property is being effectively and efficiently managed, um, and to renew federal agency real property portfolio to achieve mission objectives and obligations. Some considered outcomes in that study in, include asset management portfolio approaches, greater ability to generate and audit real property requirements and expenditure balance sheets, some performance measures linking functionality to agency objectives and goals, uh, a discussion around renewal funding through access to P3s or revolving capital funding, um, and ability to communicate the, a, a asset management systems approach to agency budget offices and senior leaders on the impacts of funding of facility investments. Key to audiences for this include OMB, agency budget offices, the Federal Royal Property Council, and capital planning programs across a number of agencies. In capital planning, we're doing a study around the technical assessment for the capital facilities of the National Institute of Science and Technology and Testing uh, and NIST. Um, we're identify we've done this study before for NIH, where we've been asked to identify the infrastructure in greatest need of repair, assess the composition of the capital and repair projects, evaluate the cost estimates, and, and provide approaches that NIST could consider in developing a comprehensive capital strategy. We've been asked by the Department of Energy, um, actually Congress requested this through a defense authorization to review the effectiveness and efficiency of the defense environmental cleanup activities of the Department of Energy's environmental management program. So these are the nuclear cleanup sites, your Hanfords. Um, 
in this study, our committee is looking at the project and program management um, practices and policies that DOE EM employs and providing both short-term and long-term ways to improve those to um, accelerate the closing of sites and to limit the liabilities that these sites have to America's national security. In sustainability and investment, we are uh, executing a workshop on mathematical approaches for optimizing infrastructure investments to enhance urban sustainability. In this workshop, we're looking to optimize work plans under, given, uh, under constrained resources, evaluate best value delivery methodologies for public works, utilize data from sensing um, the internet of things, information and communication technologies, and then um, another aspect is to explore the potential socioeconomic impact of the investment choices, the social justice and the other socioeconomic impacts of those investments. And then the longest standing activity of the, net, of the Board on Infrastructure and Constructed Environment is the Federal Facilities Council, which is a cooperative association of federal agencies, around 24, who asked the, the national academies to identify and advance technologies and processes that better help them manage the stuff that the federal government owns or construct future facilities. Um, so any part of the life cycle for the federal government in the real property owning agencies. We're also developing some new activity around innovation and technology for robotic use and search and rescue in environmental and industrial hygiene uh, in standing up a health and buildings round table and in construction safety with the National Academy of Construction around introducing and embedding safety culture concepts in undergraduate engineering education. So that is a broad sort of stroke portfolio of what the, what the Board on Infrastructure and Constructive Environment is doing right now. And I'm sure it ties together with a lot of the things that ALN um, is investigating through, through the asset management systems process. Well, what do you do in your spare time, Cameron? <laughs> I, I attend ALN uh, network um, <laughs> events. Well, there's, there's nothing more important than dealing with the plastic. So thank you for taking time away from that. And we do not uh, mind you leaving us for uh, that. But uh, we do want to transition uh, to uh, Jack Dempsey before we let you uh, leave. Uh, um, you. Uh, uh, recommend people to the board? What's the process that Jack uh, went through to become a board member? So when we're uh, looking for board members, we, we try to create a, a diverse group of experiences, of um, backgrounds, of, um, of educations, of, of, of geographies, of, of a number of sort of as diverse as we can make in the area of the topics that the board is focused on. Um, a lot of our work has been around asset management over the last 30 years. It's around how does the federal government help manage this giant bulk of infrastructure that it owns and that, that is deteriorating. Um, and so uh, asset management has been a key to that. And so Jack is part of a, a longstanding group of people that have been had served on the board for expertise in asset management and facility management um, and, and those areas. The, the way we find people is usually through um, uh, recommendations from the National Academies themselves. So we have honorific societies, the National Academy of Engineering, Science and Medicine uh, through our networks and through recommendations from organizations when we reach out to them. In terms of studies, so that group of studies that I went through, we have a more select group of expertise or a more select need for expertise. We highlight those expertise in our, in our proposals and then are expected by our executive committees to go out and seek the, the top experts in those fields and put them in our studies uh, so they can help answer questions. The key thing about the National Academy's volunteers, the people that serve on our boards and our studies, are they are volunteers. They are not paid for their time. And so um, the product that they produce has to reach a consensus agreement. So every person on that committee has to say, I agree with what's written in this report, and I agree with the findings and recommendations. 
And then it is also peer reviewed by another group of experts to make sure that uh, key aspects have been well documented, that it's supported by evidence, and that it meets the requirements of the National Academy's independence um, and, and non bias. Excellent. So um, I think everything that you were talking about um, touches on or could be imp impact or influence the Infrastructure Investment and Job Act, although that's a short term approach and you're definitely looking at the long term. And that's why it's so good to have Jack uh, Dempsey here um, bridging a number of things, asset management into the board on infrastructure and construction environment. And then Jack is also very uh, familiar with the folks at the US Government Accountability Office because Jack has a background in the uh, Coast Guard and uh, has served in uh, uh, high level uh, uh, executive office uh, roles. So Cameron, if you need to, to move on, we wanna thank you for uh, providing this excellent uh, overview and uh, let Jack kind of uh, talk about asset leadership in infrastructure as a uh, connection to uh, uh, both what Cameron was showing and uh, kind of a little bit about what he knows is coming up with the Government Accountability Office uh, presentations uh, coming next. Well, not that you know the presentations, but you know about the Government Accountability Office. So. Jack, how do you see your role in this uh, uh, matrix? You're, well, you're well, let, me, let me start first, and, and I don't have any slides, but uh, Cameron, if I, if I can borrow your slide on the NIST uh, facility, if you're sticking around, um, that, that'll be a backdrop at, at some point. Um, so so well, first actually, of all- um, Nick has that uh, slide deck. So Cameron, you don't have to do that since uh, you might okay. have to take off. We'll and, let and Nick I can, I can I can pull it pull it up later. There'll be a, a there'll be a point where I think it uh, becomes um, part of the, the comments I wanted to share. But it but it kind of highlights a number of things. But but first I'll, I'll start with, I mean it's an absolute privilege to be a member of the the board of infrastructure and structure environment at the National Academies. Um, I mean it's just just a tr tremendous opportunity to participate, give back, and, uh, and and spend time with a lot of people who have a, a passion and interest of, of just trying to make things better. And like, as Cameron uh, highlighted, a big part of what the board focuses on is asset management, but it's not exclusively asset management. There's, there's a wide range of, of activities here. And I like your, uh, your kind of, your, your, your tagline in the beginning from refrigerators uh, to something to, to soda bottles. I mean, it just keeps on uh, going on, but I think it's also um, uh, interesting and, and important to recognize that these things touch a lot of parts of our lives and if it's working well, we don't even, as individuals, don't even really notice. But if it's not working well, we're always going to find uh, something that's going to be, you know, can be fixed. Um, and I think that kind of takes us to this asset management conversation, uh, which is, you know, a lot of what fixed has a lot to do with um, understanding the needs and requirements of stakeholders in the activity, um, understanding the system, you know, this management system of how it all works, and then, and then understand how to make things happen, which a big part of that includes uh, making good resource and investment decision making. So by extension of that, I also kind of want to uh, reach out and say, I mean, thanks to Asset Leadership Network for, first of all, having these forums, uh, providing an opportunity for experts to um, hear and see and understand just what's going on in the marketplace, what's going on in industry, and then certainly um, standing behind uh, ISO 55000, which is a management system standard uh, that's championing uh, and, and actually providing a bridge for a lot of organizations to uh, just try to do things just a little bit better. So, um, you know, first of all, thanks, thanks for everybody who's uh, made, it, made this happen. Um, I think probably as an example I want to bring up, and it, it brings a lot of these points together, is uh, one, of the, one of the committees that I'm involved in, one of the activities I'm involved in at the BICE, is I'm a member of the, of the panel or the board that's uh, you know, technical assessment for capital needs, uh, capital facility needs at NIST. Um, so this is a study that is really um, kind of started with an earlier study, uh, which is the National Institute of Health. Uh, the National Institute of Health uh, asked the National Academies to take a look at how their facilities are being managed. And is there something um, 
is there some insights that can be gained from that? National Academies performed that study and they evaluated um, how the facilities at NIH, principally in the DC area, um, support the mission of NIH. Um, but they were able to take a step back and look at the relationship facilities have to the mission of NIH. Uh, it, it had a number of uh, very specific findings, um, very influential, but it really spoke to the story of at what asset management is all about. Um, simply, if facilities are working well, the performance of facilities and the infrastructure enables the organization to perform better. That's, sim that's a simple asset management story that we're talking about. So uh, learning from that study and seeing the reaction that Congress and other um, you know, executive stakeholders had, understanding the problem, uh, this follow-on study of, of NIST is, is, being, is underway right now. Um, it's also a good extension or kind of continuation of the other study, which, is, which will soon be released, which is strategies for the renewal of federal facilities. So in that strategy, that strategy, as Cameron outlined, really kind of took a look at a, like the bigger picture. What's the structural capabilities of the federal system? How is it working? What might need to be approved on that? And uh, really excited about that study uh, coming out. Uh, but I think a key element of that study is, in, is embedded in the title. It's the word renewal. You know, what, what is renewal? And I know uh, being a member of that uh, activity as well, um, that was a big conversation, uh, but it really um, provided some focus on the story of asset management. So um, if facilities are working well and we're making good investments in the facilities, then uh, the outcomes usually end up being better and vice versa. Taking a step back, the federal government is a big, large, complex organization uh, but um, over a number of different, at least a number of studies that I've been active in, this is not with the National Academies, but in other activities, uh, we look at the total cost of ownership for operating facilities. And, and roughly speaking, on the average federal agency, um, based on their appropriations, money that's the cash flow that's going through the organization to get things done, about one eighth of that, uh, that portion of that appropriation is consumed by facilities or through facilities in some way. It's a pretty significant number, one eighth. So when we look at managing assets, we look at trying to make things better. We spend a lot of time on you know planning, design, construction, assessments, master planning, um, you know, operations and maintenance, and then ultimate um, disposal or disposition of those facilities. Um, that is about one eighth of the consumption of of, of an average agency. Um, as an engineer, I'm an engineer, and, and we're talking to probably a lot of people who are involved with uh, facilities in some uh, intimate way. Um, if we optimize the expenditure of those funds, um, we, we have the ability to make that one eighth being spent better. Um, what asset management brings to the table is to think about the seventh eighths. Um, if you could improve one of those portions by 5%, meaning we manage facilities better, uh, by 5%, we're actually saving 5% on one eighth of the consumption of, a, of an average agency. If through asset management, which if you look at the ISO 55000 structure is really not about the asset itself, but managing the value produced by the asset, what you're really talking about is the seventh eighths. So if we can make good investment decisions about how facilities are being managed, and the value that facilities provide to the operation of, of, a, of an enterprise, of an organization, then we're really 5% improving on the seventh days is a much bigger bang for the buck, uh, so to speak, in terms of what's happening. So um, to quickly bring it back into a, a specific example, uh, last week had the privilege of going uh, with the National Academies. We toured uh, the NIST facilities in Boulder. And as in most you agencies- I'm sorry to interrupt, Jack. We want to see your face more than we want to see the uh, slides. That's fine. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm um, sharing now. To, uh, this seems uh, like uh, a perfect time to focus on you. Okay. So yeah. So 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 the NIST facilities is a campus, and it's up in Boulder, Colorado. It's, it's just you know just just a wonderful location. I mean, it's a great place to visit. And we got four inches of snow last week. There is kind of exciting from an East Coaster uh, living in Virginia. But uh, but the question that kind of unfolds in the conversation is. Well, well what, it, what does NIST do for the nation? It works for the Department of Commerce. Its mission is ultimately to um, improve uh, both uh, the innovation capacity of the US and to improve our competitiveness in terms of international commerce or actually capabilities. 
So while we were at NIST, we got to look at a number of different facilities, you know, another number of different labs. And it, it's just it's just amazing to see what they're doing there. So, for example, uh, not too long ago in the news, uh, 5G was being released across the nation and there were some concerns from the FAA and whether or not that would conflict with uh, the frequency uh, bandwidths that aviation is using. So there was concerns about, you know, 5G and how that might impact, um, you know, just flight, uh, just safe flight in the United States. Well, it was a NIST, uh, it was a lab at NIST in Boulder that uh, evaluated that problem to determine whether or not that was going to be a true risk to the, to the American public. So they're solving real problems in real, real time. Uh, another example of things that they're doing there is they're doing uh, research at like uh, at the Pico scale. And like, and I'm trying to understand like what, what's a Pico scale. So a, peak, a Pico meter is one trillionth of a meter. It's extremely small. Um, we talk about nanometers in terms of, you know, systems that can kind of work within our bloodstream, so to speak. We're talking about nanometers. Picometers is three orders of magnitude smaller than a nanometer. So you have labs at NIST that are figuring out how to measure things at that level of, of detail, uh, you know, the standard, just how do you get down to that uh, specificity. That technology, that, that innovation is really important in the United States because it helps make uh, computer chips, for example, a lot smaller, a lot more compact. Uh, that means they're much more portable. They can go in a lot more places. Also, uh, the energy consumption to run operations of these systems is, is greatly reduced. So, so NIST right now today is building, um, you know, doing research that's helping America understand how to do this better. Um, the outcome of that is bringing uh, the semiconductor industry back, back on shore, you know, building up that capacity within the United States, and, and, and ultimately um, improving the innovation, keeping us on the cutting edge, and, and keeping our competition. What we also observed at NIST was um, how facilities directly support and at times um, impact NIST's ability to perform its mission. So when you talk, when you think of a facility engineering perspective, you're thinking of, oh, we get things fixed, the roof leaks, we fix the roof, and we got to make things better. So, so the activity going on in terms of how facilities relate to mission is really the asset management, and this is what the study is going to be looking at. But it, it kind of brings it all home, and I think for the topic of conversation that we're having here is, we all know facilities are really important, but what becomes really important for us is to be able to explain that in simple terms to other people, um, particularly in this area and with NIST, is, uh, is does Congress understand that the investments that they're making in that infrastructure, those facilities directly affect the mission capabilities of that organization, and how does that organ those investments in the organization help America at large? And, and ultimately, that's that's really kind of an asset management story. And the way you go about doing that are, are things that we're talking about here in this conversation, and 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 simply uh, things that Asset Leadership Network has really done a lot to try to champion in the uh, in the discussion, uh, and ultimately getting back to it's a it's a management system. There's a systematic approach. It's about managing risk. It's about communicating with our stakeholders and understanding how all those pieces kind of come together. So, um, Excellent. Thank you so much, Jack, for tying that all together like that. And I'm going to ask you to very briefly tie things together for the next presentation. Um, you connected us to the Government Accountability Office, and uh, we're honored to have four directors present next. Can you give us a little setup about uh, your perspective on the important role of the uh, GAO, GAO to the nation and asset management? A absolutely happy to. And so, so first of all, I mean, the GAO is just a fantastic organization with a lot of really smart, intelligent people. When I was a federal employee, I mean, I, you know, on working for the Coast Guard, uh, there was an element of fear when GAO was coming around. You always wanted to have the right answer and be able to show what we were doing. But I always appreciated on that side of the equation, uh, the professionalism and the insight that the GAO provided. Um, since, since that time, now, you know, having opportunities to work with GAO and, and get to see from the other side of the equation, uh, it, they just do a tremendous job of really kind of taking it down to the basics. Do we understand what we're doing? Do we measure things in ways that are relevant and, 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 and actionable in terms of making good decisions? And, and overall, is everybody kind of getting the best value at, out of the government? So, you know, the GAO works, I'm sure they, they might go into some detail on this, it works for the legislative branch. So they're looking into how does the executive branch perform? 
but their studies have really provided a lot of integrity and insight in terms of how you better manage assets. You know, my, my area of interest is more specifically on the facility assets, but ultimately it leads to a better outcome and conclusion for all of us. So uh, I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of what GAO does for all of us and uh, have always been impressed uh, by their body of work and, and really interested in hear what they, they have to say next. Excellent. So it's the ALN's honor to be uh, bookending the Board on Infrastructure and Constructed Environment and the Government Accountability Office. Uh, Jack, if you're able to stick around and then be able to join in discussion uh, at the end of uh, their presentation, that would be great. And Cameron, thank you for all that you do. It's kind of, it's exhaustive to see everything that you're working on. Get some uh, staff. <laughs> you need to some help because uh, uh, you're doing really important work and we appreciate it. 